Hey there, YouTube family. Happy Sunday to you. Stocks with Josh here. Hit that like. Say hi in the comment section for me. Okay, we need to get into some extremely important dates in the market this week, which we're getting the CPI report this Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern. And I just want to be very clear, that is going to set the pace for the rest of the week and the days moving forward. In addition to that, I want to note that September is historically a bad month for the markets, as well as for crypto. If you go back in time, Bitcoin is normally hit hard in the month of September, and the markets don't normally do too well in September. So this was already going to be a shaky month, and we're looking for that CPI report to calm some nerves. But if it comes in bad, then this month is going to prove itself consistent with all the other bad Septembers, and we are gonna see some, some action to the downside. You know, in general, markets typically decline every two years, either 10 or 20% or 20 to 40%. We saw a decline this last June of above 30%. For us to recover back to our previous highs, if it took us 10 months to recover from a drop that would be between 20 and 40%, which is what we have, that means that we could potentially see a full recovery to previous highs by this February. In regards to the CPI, what we're looking for obviously is for the CPI to be lower than we've had in the previous months. And ultimately this matters because we're trying to figure out what the Fed's terminal CPI rate will be. I've shared with you guys before that the markets have priced in that the Fed will raise rates to 3.5 ahead of us sometime by the end of January. That's the number that we're looking for. If the inflation continues to rise, we would have to price in a higher rate increase, which would have a greater impact bearishly on the markets. Ultimately, the Fed is commissioned to lower inflation, and the way that he does that is by strengthening the dollar. We have seen this, the dollar be very strong, especially against other world currencies. But we're also seeing that the dollar the strength of the dollar is beginning to weaken and some of the strength of the world currencies like the euro are beginning to turn around. And they're also at, the euro for example, is at the bottom of a support trend. And it's begun to reverse, which means that it looks like it wants to have a pattern moving forward in the days ahead. And the same with the dollar, it looks like it wants to begin to have the pattern of decline. All of that would set up very nicely to allow the stock market to rise because when the dollar is strong, stocks are weak. We've talked about that many times before. All right, another very important date ahead of us this week is September 15th, which is the ETH merge. You have to know that since 2015, they have been attempting to do this particular action and this has been postponed six times in the past and it's finally upon us now. This September, the ETH merge is going to produce a huge change for the ETH network. They're basically going to be moving from proof of work to proof of stake. And the goal of that is to significantly lower their energy costs. Because here's what's happening. Right now in the proof of work, you have all these miners which are fulfilling the work of the blockchain. And to do that, the blockchain pays them in ETH, right? Right now, 12,400 ETH, I believe, are produced every single day to pay miners for proving the proof of work blockchain that ETH currently is operating on. But when it goes to proof of stake, they're no longer having to pay the miners. And then at that point, they're only going to produce ETH in the proof of work process that's going to add new ETH daily of around 1,240. 10 times smaller than what ETH was producing before. This is going to be massive for ETH, and as a lot of people have said, they've called it like a triple halvening. A similar type of event occurs with Bitcoin every four years, where the algorithm or the blockchain makes it twice as hard, essentially, for the miners to produce more Bitcoin, right? And the goal was that as Bitcoin rose in value, even though they were producing less Bitcoin, the new Bitcoin that it produced would be more valuable and thus it would sort of have some equilibrium, right? But that is, you know that there's a lot of people that are complaining about the energy consumption of Bitcoin and crypto. When the governments move forward with regulation, they're going to focus heavily on the energy costs. We saw that happen already in China 
uh, about a year ago or so where they began to just ban all mining of crypto in the country because they do have many cities with energy shortages. They don't have the energy infrastructure that they necessarily need to run all those Bitcoin miners that were all over the place, as well as the production needs of the country. And so to deal with it, rather than to lose production, which would impact people's lives more negatively, you know, employees and employers, they decided to, to, to shut down the miners, right? And that caused a lot of miners to move around the world. Some of them went up into Russia. And then of course we saw the same thing happen there. We saw that Putin also began to struggle with, with the energy costs and he began to sort of attack it. They've moved the costs over to the US, which it typically is more expensive to do that, but we actually got a huge benefit because we, have, we do have a larger energy infrastructure. But ultimately, when Ethereum goes to this new proof of uh, stake method, it's going to have a much lower energy uh, cost to it, and it's going to produce much less ETH, which is going to be much more deflationary. Some people believe that this could possibly move ETH ahead of Bitcoin from the number two spot to the number one spot because of the advancement overall in its blockchain. We're going to have to wait and see. The question that you and I have is how can we use all of this information to make money and to trade ETH as well as other cryptos, even like ETH Classic, which also is going hand in hand as ETH is moving up. A lot of people have been hedging their bets saying if this fails or if this doesn't go well, perhaps ETH Classic will do better or have a moment to shine in the sun when ETH, when the, when ETH is failing. And so we've seen a huge run up. ETH Classic has doubled in the last month. So, I mean, it's had an incredible move. But we have to look at all this, ask ourselves, how are we going to make money? And I think most people believe that this is going to be basically have a run up and then it's going to fall off a cliff. I just want to remind you guys something. If, if you're new to crypto and trading crypto, nobody cares about the news stories in bear winter. Nobody cares. The most amazing things of ado adoption could occur and it simply will not move crypto. We're likely to see a run up because of the merge, but after that, it's going to sell off. Why? Is it, be is it because ETH is, is, is somehow failing? No, it's simply because we're in the winter. None of the positive news stories get priced in in the winter. This is a time of accumulation where it moves sideways for a period of time and that new money is not moving into it uh, the way that it's going to ultimately when we get through the markup stage. And then when the markup occurs, it largely will occur in a very short amount of time and it'll get away from a lot of people. So, so you have to remember that many people have had their ETH locked up waiting for the merge. It's only after the merge that they're able to unlock their ETH and potentially take some profits or sell it. People have various financial needs that arise over time. They've got, they've got investment goals that change. They might say, hey, I want to take some of this ETH money that I've made money on or lost money on, and I want to move it into a different asset. So because all of these things are going to be happening right after this uh, merge, you've got to be aware that there's going to be tons of volatility surrounding ETH. Keep in mind, we're still in the crypto winter, and despite how good a news story we're looking at that simply doesn't compute the way that news stories will uh, be, be looked at when we get back into the bull run, the next bull run. If you're only trading crypto, now's the time to expand your investment understanding and your investment knowledge and also begin to look at trading stocks. I share with you guys how I do a lot of charting. And one of the ways that I understand the direction of the market is to understand how all of it works together, how move, money moves or rolls from, at, from one asset to another asset, how the dollar impacts stocks. If all you're trading is crypto, you're in a very narrow view and you don't see how it all works together and how all the money rolls together. If you want to follow me in my stock picks and my stock plays, as well as my small account challenge, where we work to, to double the money of $200 to $400 using a little bit more aggressive stock plays, small cap uh, investments, then click on the link in the top pinned comment, as well as the description of the video for the Moomoo platform. You can find me on the Moomoo platform under the search Stocks with Josh where I also post trades there and other, you know, chat with you guys and talk about other trades that are going on. Right now, they've got a great offer. They're offering 13 stocks if you participate in their full promotion. If you put $100 in, you can get up to 
10 free stock. You can spin a dial and win stocks valued at $2,000 each. You get a number of chances to do that, but you need to be aware that you have to put your $100 in, wait for it to clear, and then on a different day, so a couple days after, you'll get a little pop-up saying, hey, your money's cleared. That's when you can go into the Me tab, and then you can go into the Promotions tab, and you can spin for those extra stock. There are people that have gone through the process and gotten the account, put the 100 bucks in, but never went and claimed their stock. So don't do that. Get the cash that's coming to you and get positioned to begin to trade some stock with me. Expand your knowledge of investment. You need to do more than crypto. Do crypto and stocks. We're going to do it together. We can do it on the Moomoo app. That's about it, guys. I just want to say have a great Sunday, and I'll connect with you again this week. We've got some trades that I'm going to review the technicals with so that you guys can have a clear understanding of where we're looking to take profits. As always, peace and blessings, my friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button. Take care.